Howdy, with this video I want to go over a couple of sample doublespeak essays just to kind of give you a sense of how the essay should work. Uh, no, no two essays should be exactly the same uh, because you know each topic kind of pushes you in different directions. Uh, but I'm hoping that if you see a couple of sample essays you'll be able to narrow your topics down and you'll be able to see pretty much how the essay is going to work. Um, both of these are going to be APA. You can do this essay in MLA if you feel more comfortable with that or you don't want to do APA again. Uh, again, if you're in nursing or psychology or something like that, you definitely want to get more practice with APA because that's what you're going to be writing in. Um, so with APA, you have the title page. Uh, you have the running head up top and the page number. Uh, the title, uh, your name, the college affiliation. Then, of course, you have the abstract page. That gives us a summary of what your essay is going to be about. Uh, and this one, he's going to talk about Donald Trump's uh, May 7, 2017 speech to the Arab Islamic American Summit. And again, the idea is not to be pro-Trump or anti-Trump or whatever. The idea is to analyze the language the person uses in the speech or the language the ad uses when it's trying to sell you something or whatever your topic is going to be. Um, but again, you're going to pick one primary source. This is one speech. Uh, you can, and the nice thing about presidents, you can uh, get their speeches off the a White House website. Um, then again, with APA, when you start the essay, you're going to give the title. And then uh, basically what you want to do is kind of start talking about language, uh, maybe introduce some concepts about language just real briefly. And then you want to get to definitions of doublespeak. Excuse me. Uh, you can use the long quote from the source on the work side on the content page in D2L. Uh, and that's what he's doing here. Uh, he just introduces the author in the book, uh, gives a long quote and say, you know, here's what doublespeak is. Uh, and then he starts, he also notes that there's uh, four main categories. Uh, eventually, he's going to have to define the categories he's going to use in his essay, and you're going to find out that's what he's going to be doing pretty soon. Uh, in the next paragraph, uh, he go and he introduces this uh, topic: uh, where's it be? Where's the speech uh, taking place? Uh, what's it, um, in general is Trump going to talk about? Uh, but then he's going to narrow it down, and start saying Trump's using double speak in this speech, and you know he's going to show us how that works. Um, and he's going to show that Trump uses two forms of weasel words and euphemism. And he's going to build his essay on these two forms. Uh, you don't have to use all different, all the different types of double speak in your essay. You may end up with a topic that doesn't use gobbledygook, for example, or or doesn't uh, use a whole lot of jargon per se. Uh, but you want to have you want a source that has enough that you can make a good essay out of it, right? And he's able to do this here. Uh, so he's going to talk about the two types of double speak that Trump uses at this uh, Arab summit uh, speech. Uh, he's going to talk about weasel words. And you'll notice here, uh, before he gets going on his examples, he's going to define weasel words, right? Uh, so he's, he gives that definition again. It's coming from that source on the content page. Uh, then he starts using quotes, and then he's going to kind of analyze that quote and show us where the double speak is within that quote. Uh, and again, we're not going to read this whole essay, but he's pointing out the weasel words like help and good uh, so that we will be sure to help our Saudi friends to get a good deal from our great American defense companies. And he's just going to take a soon and say, here's why this doesn't really mean much. Uh, he's using weasel words that qualifies what comes after it. And develops a good discussion on that. Uh, then he gives another example of weasel words. Uh, gives a quote and then kind of shows us uh, why he thinks they're weasel words. That's kind of the trick. Don't just give a quote and assume the reader can see what you're saying. Uh, you want to show, you know, want to define weasel words, give the quote from your source, and then show us what within that quote uh, you think are weasel words and how they're being used. Uh, and that's kind of what he does for the whole essay, uh, taking us through the weasel words and the euphemism in that speech. Uh, has a good references page there. Looks good. Uh, and that's kind of the basic outline of his uh, essay there, right? Uh, start with the general discussion of, of language, uh, give the definition of double speak, introduce your topic, give your thesis. Uh, then take us through uh, that your source and show us how the double speak is being used by that person or that ad or whatever. Uh, I think I can look at another one real quick. Again, with the header, you have running head colon and the title in all caps, or the shortened title in all caps. Uh, then the page number on the upper right hand side. Uh, she has the title, should have her name here, and then the, the school, the dual enrollment student. Uh, once you get to the abstract, you should that running head should disappear and just have the shortened title. And uh, that can be a pain, especially if you're doing uh, working in uh, uh, Google Docs. Uh, do the best you can with that. So there's the abstract, going to tell us uh, what the essay is going to be about. 
Uh, and again, this essay is going to talk about a drug ad uh, by Eli Lilly uh, for the drug Stratera. Uh, and she gives her title. And you'll see again, she, uh, general kind of discussion about language, kind of talk, kind of delete into your definitions. Uh, she goes so far as to get, give us some specific examples of what double speak might entail. Uh, some good examples there. Um, the, but then, kind of like uh, the previous essay, she gives a good definition of double speak. Uh, an easy way to do that is with the long quote. You can do summary and paraphrase or short quotes if that if you can get your good definition going there. And again, it's coming off that uh, source that's on the content page, that double speak source. Um, and then she kind of starts getting into introducing her topic, uh, telling us what Stratera does. Don't just assume people know what a certain drug does or something. Uh, and then gives her thesis. Uh, Lily, the makers of Stratera, employ weasel words, inflated language, euphemism, and jargon. Uh, and the advertisements and patient information for their medication. Uh, and she's going to start with a television advertisement and kind of take us through that. So she's going to, unlike the previous essay where he's talking only about language, uh, she gets to uh, have a little more fun with the images. And we've all seen the drug ads on TV where, uh, you know, once people take the drug, they're the happiest people on the planet. And, Everything's cured. Uh, there's you know, children and baskets full of puppies and all that. <clears throat> Especially when they start getting to the side effects, they want to kind of divert your attention and they show people playing and little kittens and all that kind of stuff. Uh, then she's going to start getting into her discussion of the copy, of the wording, uh, and that should be the focus of the essay, right? We're talking about how people use language. Uh, but sometimes you may get a different type of double speak, like images. Um, I think I talked about before, like I had one essay on Kelly and Conway, and he, he had to make his own own kind of definition of a, a type of double speak for what she does. She, I think he called it diversion or something like that. Um, so don't be shy about that, but you want to kind of make sure you address some of the ones that Lutz uses that we that I addressed in that uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so she gives a definition. Uh, again, with the definitions, you can use short quote, summary, paraphrase, uh, whatever, whatever gets your point across. Uh, she gives a quote from the source, and then she's going to take us through there and tell us why she thinks that's double speak. Uh, and she's kind of saying we don't, we want the drug to eliminate the problem or fix the problem, not just treat it, which is because treat's just a weasel word there; it doesn't mean anything. Um, then she kind of takes us through the ads. Notice before she gets going with a certain type of double speak, she she defines it within her essay. Uh, don't just start going off and this is this is euphemism, yada, yada, yada. Define euphemism, tell us what you think it means, or uh, what Lutz thinks it means. And again, she's given examples uh, from the essay, um, from the um, from the advertisement, or from the, the information the drug company is putting out about Stratera. Uh, and you can kind of see the basic pattern. Give a definition of the term, kind of show where in the, in the source that you're seeing that term being used, and then explain why you think it's that term. Um, she found quite a bit. So her essays, uh, dealing with a few more terms than the previous one, but both are pretty good essays there. Uh, another good references page. Uh, looking well formatted and everything. That's basically how it's going to work. Uh, and the trick to this essay is, is finding a good topic. Uh, and you might want to do a good outline before you get uh, to writing on this. And obviously, if when you send me your topics that are due Tuesday, I'm going to have something to say about it as well. Make sure you're on the right track. Uh, but hopefully that helps a little bit just to see a couple essays you know, that have been done on this assignment. It's always good to see other people have done it without and survived to tell the tale, right? Uh, again, hopefully you find good topics that you're interested in and want to talk about. And that'll make good essays. Uh, but I'm going to stop there. Uh, be sure to let me know if you have any questions, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.